Hello sunshines and welcome to Devaliant to Play as Astrologaster by Niam Niam. This game was part of Itchio's bundle for racial justice and equality. If you would like to play the game for yourself, check out the links in the description below. Are you fascinated by the stars and medieval medicine? Then this historical visual novel is for you. Now without further ado, let's get started. Warning. This video features talk of medical advice that should in no way be used unless prescribed by a licensed medical professional. This game is just for fun and historical education purposes only. Discretion is advised. Hear ye, hear ye. Spanish Armada nears English coast. Nation prepares for invasion whilst Queen searches for missing navy. Oof. Hear ye. As Spanish ships near our shores, the Queen's ground troops prepare for what promises to be a blood-soaked slaughter of Englishmen by continental Catholic savages. With England's coast undefended, experts predict Spanish ships will be sailing up the th the Thames to London within days. Sources in the royal court say the Queen is more than a little vexed by the absence of the Royal Navy, which experts describe as lost. <laughs> Oh, welcome back. <laughs> Blessed even, Dr. Foreman. Mistress Payne, what brings you in such weather? It is most dangerous to be about in it. It takes more than a little wind and rain to forestall me from doing the Lord's work. Besides, foul weather is naught but God's righteous vengeance upon London for the sinful debauchery of its inhabitants. Verily? Then I dread to think what northerners get up to of an evening. Pray heed me carefully, Dr. Foreman, for tis on a most pressing matter that I am come. Doctors, you have heard the news? The Spanish Armada does sail once again towards England's shores. It seems this latest Armada was most unexpected. Well, as tis off said, no one expects the Spanish Armada. Tis very grave this time, for I have heard tell that our own warships are far away at sea, and with our coasts undefended, a Catholic horde may soon be sailing up the Thames to slay us all. Aye, our situation is most grave indeed. But what would you have me tell you, Mistress Payne? I wish to know whether the English fleet will arrive home in time to defend our shores. Or might we ordinary folk be compelled to take up arms to defend ourselves? Dr. Foreman, are you ready to beat off the Catholics, come what may? Am I ready to beat <laughs> off the... Uh, prithee, madam, let us pray the need never arises. Uh, perchance the stars will offer us some reassurance. Will the Royal Naval Fleet return home in time to defend England from the Spanish Armada? I doubt it. The Royal AB is not due to a reckless and misguided <laughs> in pursuit of gold. Ambitions will be thwarted by confusion. Unpleasantness will result in the cunning plan to steal goods. Okay, so that's not good. Um... Mistress Payne must rouse her neighbors to take up arms. The authorities cannot be trusted to uphold their duty to defend ordinary Englanders. Catholic evil angels uh, will have their plans thwarted by a deadly, unpredictable event. Interesting. The Spanish fleet will be delayed due to idleness of their sailors. Okay. So, these are... Hmm. It's hard. So, we're going to roll a d6. Um... Uh, 1 and 2 is A, 3 and 4 is B, 5 and 6 is C. 3, B. Ooh. I really don't like this one. You know what, I'm gonna go see that that seems like what she wants to hear, so. But she probably would take up arms against, with her neighbors. <laughs> You're no longer a feared Mistress Payne. The Spaniards are soon to be thwarted. Although the Armada does near our shores, its progress is slow. For, according to the stars, the sailors are most idle in nature. <laughs> oh, yes. Tis a trait oft remarked in Continentals. And they will be punished for this sin of sloth, for their lives are soon to be taken by a most deadly event. Glory be! <laughs> and what nature of event might this be? 
How will England achieve this glorious victory? A Probably. fierce sea battle won by our mighty warships? A triumphant charge of our cavalry brigades? Ah, well, England will use her... Uh, let me see. Terrible now. weather. Ah, yes. These southern continentals will be struck down by England's most terrifying weapon of all. <laughs> our lamentable, lamentable weather. <laughs> Button down your hatches and wrap up warm, Mistress Payne. A violent storm is coming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So I must congratulate you on the st sterling counsel you gave me in relation to my horrid cousin Barbara, whom my parents did wish me to marry. As you did predict, the wretched little fiend did at length contrive a method for ending our engagement. She has run off with the Earl of Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury? Shrewsbury. Oh my god, this man. Good morrow, Mr. Mug. Back again so soon. And yet your red spots do seem to have faded. Aye, those spots were naught but the work of fleas. I see. My wife did beat the rugs and banish the dogs from the house. She'll be beating and banishing me next if she has her way. Mm -hmm. Well, I am glad to hear you are faring better. Uh, what brings you this day? I have a humoral imbalance and need treating for it. A humoral imbalance, you say? Well, it is true that an imbalance of humours can affect a man's mood. For instance, an excess of black bile, which is a cold, dry humour, can provoke feelings of melancholy, whereas yellow bile it is... is hot and dry. I thank ye for the explanation, Dr. Foreman, but I did learn all about humours when I took supper with my friend, Mistress Ollingworth. She has a humoral imbalance and takes medicine uh -huh. for it. Hence, I am come this day for medicine to treat my own imbalance. I see. And what mental symptoms are you experiencing? Any unusual or troubling feelings? I very troubling. Why, I find myself a fretting and a-pacing all the day long. Even my wife has remarked upon it. Anxiety and mm -hmm. agitation. Uh, pray tell, did these feelings begin before or after you spoke with your friend, Mistress Ollingworth? After. Hmm. Let me see now. After. After, me thinks. Mm -hmm. Aye, after. Why, does that matter? Yes. Yes, quite possibly. Uh, but let us see what these stars do have to say. What humoral imbalance does ail my querent Nicholas Mug? All right. Let's see. We have suggested minor imbalance, the yellow bile. Mug is mildly choleric. He is not. Uh, is suffering from constipation and related to psychological condition. Mm-hmm. Have you a diagnosis yet? This day I am to dine with Mistress Ollingworth, and I wish to tell her all about it. Aye, it is done. Uh, you have an imbalance of phlegm in your bowels. Not only does this cause constipation, it does also provoke a condition of the mind called retention of the anus. <laughs> uh, with retention of the anus, the sufferer is prone to fixation and obsession. Mm -hmm. Is there, perchance, a particular subject upon which you think you may fixate or obsess? Uh, pretty, sir. Take your time to think. Hmm. Nay. Nay, I cannot say as I do fixate or obsess <laughs> over anything. Methinks your diagnosis must be wrong. Uh huh. Oh, well, it was worth a try. Aye, well, doubtless you will have better luck with the stars next time, eh? Good day, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> oh, this man! Ugh, stop going down. I need this letter. What did you say? I do not think I would like to tell Mr. Ollingworth about an imbalance of my bowels. Not over dinner, forsooth. Mm -hmm. Hear ye, hear ye! Spanish Armada sunk by English storm! Goal! We did it! <laughs> Proving once again that God loves England more than our Catholic enemies, the Spanish naval fleet has been defeated by a mighty storm and has been raging in the English Channel for nigh on three days. What remains of the Armada has fled back to Spain. Beachcombers are advised to wait for the storm to abate before looting corpses that have washed ashore. Here comes a son of Nova Earth. Know you how much 
his father is born to such a boy advantage is bought entitled to much deserving of much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sirrah, I, I have dire need of your counsel. Pray calm yourself, sir, and tell me of this urgent affair. Oh, verily, it is most urgent. A fair maiden has my heart, a maid with hair of shining gold and eyes so blue the finest sapphires grow pale with envy. But she is the most pious and demure in nature and has many other suitors. How might I win her favor? Golden hair? Uh, but in our last consultation... Uh, let me see here in my notes. Ah, yes, uh, you told me your heart belonged to... A maid with hair of onyx black that doth make the finest ebony go grey with envy. You mean my cousin Marion? <laughs> Pish! That was naught but a childish fancy. I bid you, foreman, pray focus on the matter at hand. For if you do not help me win my true love's favour, my bursting heart will tear asunder. My soul will wither unto... Aye, aye, <laughs> as you will. Let us see what guidance can be had from the stars. How may Lancelot Moore win the heart of this golden-haired maiden? If it is, <laughs> he was Alan. Have I f finished? Okay, I can't. Oh, so she has one more. Yeah, but I have... So Lancelot Moore, one, two, three. So I have three more people I haven't met yet. I only have two letters, and I need six more, so I'm closest with Robert Devereux, who has been lost to sea. Sybil, uh, this guy, maybe. Emma Sharp, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, sudden religious conversion is strongly advised. <laughs> Moore's hope will be realized, but he must be self-disciplined and paid. Oh, that doesn't sound like something he can do. Uh, the maid secret nature is hidden beneath a veil of false religious fervor. It would appear that more it has a brutish nature. Ooh. Uh, more may win the lady's hand in marriage with jewelry and fine things. I doubt that. And the maid's father is a deceitful business partner. More should lie about the size of his fortune, a trifling task for such an oversauced peacock. <laughs> uh, hmm. Let's try this. It would seem the fiercest rival for the maiden's favor is one of our father's business partners. He is a deceitful knave who tells the father lies. You must best him by telling even greater lies. Tell her father you are much wealthier than you verily are, and he will surely favor your advances. A father's business partner, you say? But is he not? Oh, God's teeth! The man is her uncle. If he seeks to wed his niece, I do not think it right. Fie, t'would be very wrong. I will go to her father and tell him it is better he favor me than bestow his daughter's hand on his own brother. I bid you good day, foreman, for it is most urgent that I deliver the poor girl from such an unnatural fate. Okay, uh, so he's probably gonna come back and that's gonna go back down because I probably made a huge she mistake. Likes a drink. She does care not what you think, a head may end up down the sink, but Alice cares not what you think. <laughs> Good day, Mistress Black. What brings you? Oh, Dr. Foreman, I have worked myself into such a state that I have urgent need of you. Oh, uh, you have, have you? Uh, well then, let me just, uh... Yea, I have urgent need of your counsel. I am certain that my husband, Blarg, is hiding a shameful secret from me. As you doubtless did note from my flushedness of face and heaving of bosom, <laughs> I burn with the fever of suspicion and curiosity. Indeed, I did remark a fever upon your person, and wish fervently that I may bring it to a speedy resolution. Let us see. What is this secret that your husband, Thomas Blagg, hides from you? Financial ruin. 
Let's see. Read the stars by selecting the highlighted section of the sky. It appears Alice is to inherit wealth one day. Apparently, maybe. Alice's husband serves his wife and family well through his free girl management of their affairs. Oh, the secret relates to a sudden transformation in fortune. Surely this refers to the Spanish treasure expeditions invested in, but would it be right to reveal what I know to Alice? I see intelligence, authority, yea, verily. Alice is impressed by my authority. And so, oh, so you're going to start an affair. All business instincts are misdirected. No kidding. Alice's husband has been carelessly optimistic about the family. Okay, so that's an option. And now, and then, a religious romance? <laughs> I think it's this one, because I think he's hiding financial ruin from her. I fear the secret your husband hides is a sudden transformation from wealth to pauperdom. For Called he has it. been careless with your family's finances by making a series of bad business investments. <gasps> Lord's a mercy! That boiled brained chump has ruined us! Upon my virtue, I can hardly bear to think on it. Nay, nay, I cannot even. Say, is that medicinal wine I spy on the shelf behind <laughs> you, good sir? <laughs> Prithee, pour your patient a dose of it. Simon makes a fine figure when he reads the stars wisely. <laughs> Mayhap I stay a while and take wine and a little else with him. Oh. Coitus post consultatio. <laughs> Excellent. You couldn't do a little bit more for me? Of all the vices, why must my husband choose greed? A drunken fornicator gives his wife far less trouble than a gambler. Oh. She killed her second husband. Hey, Mistress Delamere. Good day, Dr. Foreman. Tis Lady Dyer now. I remarried after poor Mr. Delamere passed. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, I am full sorry to hear of your husband's demise, my lady. Twas his weak heart, as you did warn me. John collapsed and died at a mask ball. For someone, we know not whom, came to the ball dressed as a, a monstrous spider. <laughs> poor Mr. Delamere. He was always so afraid of spiders. <laughs> oh, what a ghastly business. You must have been most distressed. Yes, I was. So I hope you will understand why I worry for the health of my new husband, Lord Dyer. Mayhap tis not at all. And yet... And yet you would wish to know so that you may rest easier. Mm -hmm. Why, of course, my lady. Uh, pray, describe Lord Dyer's troubles to me, no matter how trifling they may seem to you. Well, I have noted that my husband awakens many times in the night to make water. <laughs> Mayhap is the reason why he tires so easily during the day. And he does oft complain of thirst and hunger, even after meals. Uh, frequent urination, tiredness, dog-like appetite and thirst. Uh, be there anything else? There is also a small wound on his hand. It does not appear grave, yet it has not healed even though it be some weeks since he cut himself. A wound that will not heal. Hmm. Then let us see what these stars have to say. Uh, be there any grave illness troubling Mr. John Delamere? Methinks you mean Lord Henry Dyer, <laughs> Dr. Foreman. I beseech your pardon, my lady. Uh, what illness troubles Lord Henry Dyer? <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so just imbalance of the key. Uh, I think it has something to do with this. Uh, is the diabetes. Yeah. Um, he has been bewitched. Gangrene of the hand character has been information caused by corrupt blood. No, I think it's, he has diabetes. It seemed Lord Dyer suffers from the diabetes. Tis a grave case diabetes. of it, I am afraid. God mend me. 
then how am I to keep my husband from dying of it? Well, the consumption of lettuce seeds and barley water can help, and you must not allow him to take honey or sweetmeats. In truth, I am a little concerned about the wound on his lordship's hand, though it be minor. It is the diabete that prevents it from healing. Oh, then what should be done about it? Take Lord Dyer to a barber surgeon, where he may have leeches applied to his wound. This will draw out the corrupt blood to hasten the healing. But prithee, be sure that your husband never cuts himself again. Mm -hmm. For the corruption of blood such cuts occasion in a sufferer of the diabete, well, they oftentimes prove fatal. Oh, then I shall do precisely <laughs> as you advise, Dr. Foreman. I thank you heartily, sir. Good day. He will only eat sweet meats and he will cut himself every day. <laughs> as per your suggestions, sir. <laughs> Oh my god, she's only gonna kill one more husband. Or, I guess, two more husbands, maybe. I think she came to say that she miscarried. Good day, Mistress Allen. I hear a child was lately born to you. I trust he is well? Yes, indeed. God has favoured us with a healthy boy. He is a true blessing to Mr. Allen and me. <coughs> and we pray he remains so. That is, that this child remains in good health. And as I do ail of something, normally I would not have come, but methinks it is best I am treated uh, for the sake of Marmaduke. Lest he take ill from me. <coughs> I see. Then pray describe your troubles to me, Ave, Mistress Allen. Well, in truth, it is but a cough. But indeed, at first I thought was naught but a chilly cold. But it is many weeks now, and it lingers still. <coughs> Forsooth, I am afeard it does grow worse. Many weeks, you say? Aye, that is most concerning. Let us see what the stars have to say. Consumption. What ails Mistress Avis Allen, and how may she be cured? All right. Uh, has the mattering of the breast. It's just mild and bowels. Uh, suggests a mild deficiency of blood in the body. I doubt that. Uh, it's been bewitched. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think she has like a chest cold. Before I complete my judgment, madam, I must ask a question of, uh, medical relevance. Who is the true father of your- God mend me, Simon! You would plague me with your suspicious fancies even now, in my very hour of need! Have you no thought for my son and my- <coughs> I am full sick of your jealous delusions! Oh, verily, I should never have come. I will bid ye good day now, Simon! But would you not wish to know what ails you? I indeed, I would. Which is why I will be finding myself another doctor. All right. <laughs> and, yep. This is final consultation for this clearant. I'm pretty sure I will find myself a true physician, a doctor who has medical license. When the story seems so true, the fact that <laughs> Good day, Signor Ferraro. How may I do you service? Hmm. How may you do me service, huh? Tis a question, is it not? I do hear you offer many different services, eh? not just in medicine, for you are a dottore of a special kind, one who gives answers to all the problems, see? Forsooth, tis true, signor. In my practice, I endeavor to treat the whole man, mind, body, soul, the location of his missing household <laughs> items, all are connected at a holistic level. I take it this time you are come about a problem that does not pertain to a bodily complaint? See? 
These are my mama. She does a worry night and day. She say, Ricardo, you must go to the wise man who reads the stars and have him tell you what your future holds. I say, Mama, if it'll make you happy, I will go to Signor Foreman and ask him. I see. And is there any particular reason for your mother to be thus concerned? Be you faced with some kind of imminent danger? A particular reason, you say? Nay, signor, she needs no reason to worry. Mia madre is an Italian, mama. Ah, yes, of course. You see now, eh? Huh? She is not like these London mamas who make the children live in a cupboard with the dog. Well, then, mayhap the stars might offer your devoted mother some comfort. What does the future hold for Ricardo Ferraro and his mother? <laughs> Excellent. Uh... Is being honest and soon his deception is being is not being honest soon his deceptions will be discovered. I don't think he's Italian. My relationship is is about to undergo a sudden transformation. <laughs> okay, weird. Uh, is a an authority who holds a position responsibility of a learned institution. Okay. A uh, young man who is in a relationship with Senior Ferraro's mother is a hypocrite who will betray her. Ferraro. Ferraro will one day inherit an agreeable sum from his mother. Ferraro is frugal. The family is frugal and includes him. Uh, this includes him will, who has carefully managed her personal fortune. Okay. I think it's this one. I am afraid these stars reveal information of a most disturbing nature. Uh, verily? Aye. When you first came to me, you did tell me that you worked in trade. And yet my chart very plainly indicates that you are an authority figure, connected with a learned institution over which you hold a position of responsibility. Indeed, it would seem that you are not who you say you are. Do you deny it, Signor? Oh, Sarah! You would accuse me of calling myself something I am not? Their, their voice just changed. <laughs> Look at you, Sarah. A charlatan who would call himself a doctor. You are naught but a pretender. Fie, sir. It is you who are the pretender. For it is clear you are not the merchant of Venice you pretend to be. Who are you? What is your true name, sir? You will know it in time, Sarah, for we shall meet again. I bid you good day, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> 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 Yep. Dang. I now have all the information I need for my report. Do you? <laughs> what are we at? Okay. So, he still has like five purpose. Like, because we did it. But, like, when we started doing good, it went down. So, that, to me... Yeah. Uh-huh. Alright. Well, it's lunchtime for me, so I think I'm going to leave it for today. Or right now, at least. Thank you for joining me as I played Astralagaster by Niam Niam. The, that name the next episode will be out shortly if you enjoyed what you saw please leave a like a follow and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the new episode drops also don't forget to check out the link to the completely free discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind let's keep the comments chill so no hate or spoilers as i'm not above removing these comments and the people who make them that's all for now folks and i'll see you next time <laughs>